This is David Dickey, and I would like to explain about a mixing index that helps solve industrial mixing processes. Common mixing problems, in my experience, fall in several categories. One of the most common is inconsistent process results. There's also a need to improve or change an existing process for a variety of reasons. In most cases, the use of existing mixing equipment involves multiple products with a single mixer or repurposing equipment from a different process. Purchase of new equipment is rarely an option for these types of problems. And there's always uncertainty about the capability of the existing equipment. Another area is the design or interpretation of pilot scale tests and those results are rarely understood. CFD modeling offers some possibilities, but has limitations for these types of applications. CFD typically calculates velocities, but industrial processes do not have specific requirements for liquid velocity values. CFD raster or vector plots may not be scaled consistently, such that red on one plot may not be the same as the red on another. There is no quantitative method to convert CFD velocities into a consistent measure of intensity. CF results are often evaluated just by a visual interpretation of some kind of plot of the velocity. Similarly, pilot scale results are also evaluated by, by visual observation or qualities and not by quantities. So scale up becomes vague. Alternate approach to mixing evaluation is to start with a calculated value for mixing intensity and then observe how CFD or other processes are modeled for those same conditions. A one to 10 scale of mixing intensity was introduced in an article by Hicks and Company in 1976. The intensity estimate was used to create tables for new mixer selections. The scale was based on a recirculating pumping capacity, and that pumping capacity was used to predict an average cross-sectional liquid velocity. The significance of this mixing index, the mixing index also has values from one to 10, but they can be calculated directly from mixer variables. The mixing index of one represents a minimal level of liquid motion, a mixing index of 10 is typically a maximum intensity for industrial applications. Intensity values are not significant to more than one decimal place. The difference between a mixing index of 3.3 and 4.3 should be observable. The difference between a mixing index of 3.3 and 3.4 probably is not noticeable. The mixing index calculation uses the turbulent power number, the impeller rotational speed, the impeller diameter, and the liquid volume, all of which contribute to a mixing intensity. Fluid viscosity effects are handled by a correction factor. The mixing index in customer injury units is equal to a coefficient of 4.05 times 10 to the minus fourth, times the impeller power number to the one third, times the rotational speed in RPM, times the impeller density in inches raised to the five halves, divided by the square root of the volume in gallons. The correction factor is applied to the mixing index representing the effect of viscosity. The mixing index, of course, can be done in other units, and for instance, this being coherent metric units, the values of the variables change as does the coefficient. This then is a representation of what the one to 10 mixing index looks like. Looks like in the sense of velocity distributions calculated by computational fluid dynamics. While these can be accomplished by changing the rotational speed, it's not practical for an industrial application to have that much of a speed range so I also increased the impeller to tank diameter ratio as the mixing index increased. These, I think, adequately represent typical types 
of industrial mixing applications. And as can be seen, there are differences between the different mixing index values, but the differences at times are subtle or at least vague as far as how you might interpret a way of saying this is more or less because. The same thing can be done with the one to 10 scale for mixing index uh, with hydrofoil impellers. It can be done the same way with straight blade impellers, in this case, uh, radial flow. Well, obviously there are some benefits and limitations. The benefit is a simple calculation representing a mixing intensity. It works for different impellers because the power number is used in the calculation. It works for different liquid levels because the volume adjusts for that. It can effect, estimate the effect of multiple impellers and it can assist with scale up. Some of the limitations are, well, it only applies directly to liquid blending, but while not accurate to evaluate other mixing processes, liquid motion is still a factor in other applications like solid suspension, heat transfer, or other processes. And so the mixing index provides some level of guidance as far as the intensity is concerned. Some of the additional calculations that can be done for multiple pellers, the total mixing index can be estimated by the square root of the sum of squares of the mixing index values for each impeller. For different impellers, the mixing index is a function of the turbulent power number to the one-third, and that one-third power exponent is also characteristic of pumping numbers with similar functional relationships. Finally, the viscosity effect uses a Reynolds number function to correct for the reduced pumping or uh, velocity with increased viscosity. This shows a couple of curves. The top curve is for turbine style impellers, basically any impellers with a turbulent power number greater than or equal to one. The lower curve shows the effect on lower power number impellers such as hydrofoils. The net utility is expanded as the mixing index can also be used for mixer design rather than just evaluation. It is possible to use the rearranged form of the mixing index calculation to solve for an impeller diameter based on a rotational speed and a desired mixing index. The same thing can be done with mixer speed as a function of desired mixing index and the impeller diameter. For using the mixing index for scale up can be demonstrated with geometrically similar scale up where they're all large scale dimensions are all in direct proportion to the small scale conditions. The only remaining variable is the rotational speed. Common scale up for geometric similarity, equal tip speed, equal power per volume, equal solid suspension, which typically falls somewhere between tip speed and power per volume. Other scale up criteria are commonly not practical. This shows a geometrically similar scale up using a computational fluid dynamics model. And what we have here is the pilot scale has an impeller diameter of four inches. The large scale has an impeller diameter of 32 inches or an eight to one increase in linear scale. To keep the tip speed constant, the small scale or pilot scale speed needs to be reduced by the same factor of eight. But then if we go back and calculate the mixing index for values for these, the pilot scale mixing index is 3.0, the large scale is a mixing index of 3.0. A feature of the mixing index calculation is it can be effectively used in any size vessel. If we do the same thing with a power per volume scale up on geometric similarity, the linear scale remains the same and the general geometry of the problem is unchanged. But now the large scale rotational speed is, as it happens, just twice the rotational speed of the tip speed calculation, all because of the geometric ratio that was challenged. But that same factor applies to the mixing index, which has gone from 3.0 in the pilot scale to 6.0 in the large scale. 
if we did something like some kind of a solid suspension scale up based on a particular application, we find that the rotational speed can fall between that as a mixing index of 5.1. And while all of these large scale CFD uh, demonstrates differences, it is sometimes difficult to establish a clear quantitative dif differentiation. If we do the same kind of thing with some impractical geometrically similar scale up, if we do a fruit number scale up, the large scale rotational speed is now 173 RPM rather than 122 for the power per volume. And what ends up happening is we now have a mixing index of 8.3 when we scale up from a mixing index of 3.0. Other possibilities, if we do a Reynolds number scale up, we end up with a ridiculously low rotational speed. We basically see no apparent velocity or significant velocities with a CFD model, and the mixing index is 0.4 or less than one, representing that it probably isn't sufficient to move the liquid. We can do the same thing with equal blend time, where the large scale speed needs to be the same as the small scale speed. And in addition to the large regions of high velocities predicted by the CFD calculation, we have a mixing index of 24, which indicates this is probably never practical for an industrial application. For non-geometric scale-up, I typically use a stepwise procedure, first with a geometric scale-up to the large-scale tank diameter, then adjusting the liquid level by changing the volume for the large-scale tank, and finally change other picture features for a desired design, such as number of impellers, impeller type, impeller locations, and things of that sort. The interesting advantage here is the mixing index can now be used to choose or compare conditions at each step in the scale-up process, giving some kind of impact on what is actually being chosen. The mixing index provides a practical engineering solution to otherwise potentially complicated mixing problems. It's at least a starting point. It provides calculated options to evaluate intensity. It can be used for design by estimating either the speed or diameter for a particular uh, proposed design. It can be used to check for unreasonable conditions or changes. It provides a single numerical value when used with CFD velocity distributions. And basically, the mixing index is a practical way to help solve industrial mixing process problems. And that's the story I wanted to present this morning with respect to what this mixing index can do to solve process problems.